PK come out. Uh, my expectations are just to learn more in the field. This is my first class. Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, next, uh, next we have uh, fire, fireflies. Fireflies, not, uh, not a talker, not talker, Dr. Okay, we move to Jared. Uh, I know some have muted, so maybe they are not listening. Jared, when you okay? Okay, Omiti, Onunga. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Omiti Onunga. At Aripo, and uh, I hope to benchmark with the practice at uh, OAPI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Fred. Uh, Zipora Ruto. Zipora, are you with us? Okay. Uh, some are on, but I've not. Okay. Uh, any, any other person who has not who's come in late? Okay, so let me invite uh, David, just a short introduction and then we'll start up. Thank you. Boyo. Okay, my name is David Boyo. I am a practicing attorney in Cameroon and a licensed intellectual property attorney with ORP. Member of the International Trademark Association a committee member for the ADRO, Alternative Dispute Resolution, and uh, I am a certified mediator and arbitrator. Though uh, the practice has not uh, started in ORP, but the legislation has made provision for regulation of dispute by mediation and arbitration. That is another topic or on a different day. But for today, I, I want to say I am the least person to talk about ORP because I'm not a staff of ORP, but a practitioner. And I'm going to share my knowledge on the practice of filing patents in ORP. you get me? Can I get some confirmation that you're hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we are. Please throw me. And, okay. Uh, Am I audible now? Yes. Yes, you are. You are actually good. I can hear you properly myself. Okay, yeah, you can uh, okay. full screen of sharing. Uh, you like it that well, way. It's fine. It's fine with me. Okay. So that I can alternate my material and... Uh, and see the phases of, okay, uh, I'm fine. All right. Uh, that said, let me give room for other participants to introduce themselves before I move on. Okay. Um, okay, let's, let's proceed. Uh, those who have not introduced themselves, please. Um, is Zipporah in now? Jared Anyoike. Okay, uh, those uh, participants who had not introduced themselves, like the fly, fly, fireflies, I think it's not in yet. Eh? They checked in and walked out, or what has happened? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, Jared, are you with us? Wanyoike? Oh, Zipora is here. Okay, just tell us uh, maybe your name, your organization, and expectation. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm, afternoon. I'm Zipora Ruto, a lecturer in Masinde Mulilo University. Uh, I'm new, uh, I want to learn more. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's good explanation. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jared. Okay, Jared. Maybe not yet. Kingori Macharia. Uh, good afternoon. Good 
afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. Morning. We can yes. see you. Are we, in, are we in a position to be seen or not? We are okay that way. Uh, yes. All right. My name is George Kimori. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. I'm a patent agent. And uh, my expectation, I do practice law in Nairobi. And uh, my expectation is to increase my knowledge in uh, IP. And uh, I'm looking forward for an exciting our presentation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Kinori. Uh, who else? Uh, do we have Nani in now? Tectari, uh, Fireflies. Okay, Wanyoike. All right. So I think, uh, David, if you are ready, you can. Yes, sir. Start on. Yeah, please. Okay. Um, A, web, a webinar. Okay. So uh, I, I was listing the, the member countries of OAPE, which I believe uh, uh, the, uh, the members have done their research and they know some of these countries. Maybe I should make the presentation interactive. Can I maybe get members list some of the member countries of OAPE, the participants list some of the member countries of OAPE so that we I, I get the knowledge then what they know about OAP countries. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's a good thank idea. You, thank you, David. Continue. David, you know, uh, OAP, I think, is basically the West African countries, uh, the French-speaking West African countries that are members of uh, intellectual property organizations. And of course, I know that uh, other English-speaking African countries, uh, West African countries are also members, if I'm not wrong. So I think uh, the entire West African region could be the com comprises of the membership of the OAPI. That is how I understand it. Oh, uh, okay. No, I, it's basically the French-speaking countries and uh, you have the Spanish-speaking countries like Equatorial Guinea and Guinea-Bissau. Uh, okay. And then you have the Comoros, which... Uh, uh, members, but uh, these 17 members countries are Benin, Chad, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Comoros, Togo, Ivory Coast, Gabon, Guinea, Guinea Bissau, Equatorial Guinea, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Senegal, Ch uh, and uh, I think Chad. I've mentioned Chad already. So, um, we the applicable law in the OIP is the Bangui Accord. The initial Bangui Accord was signed in 1977 and uh, revised in, on February 19, uh, 24, 1999. And recently, on December 14, 2015, the law was equally revised. Now, uh, we are faced with uh, three, are you, am I still on? Yes, yes. Okay. So we, uh, we, we have three legislations that have been passed and have been applicable in the situation of ORP. My presentation today would look at... Everything cannot cost more than, come here, nothing cannot cost more than a thousand. It should be 400 or something. Sorry, we need Hello? We, ca we can't see your presentation. Do you want to share with us? David? No, I, I would prefer to share with you immediately after we finish ah, the, okay. Uh, okay. the training. It's okay no, to he's saying he, he, he says he can, uh, he'll share the, his uh, presentation later to you. And maybe you can share with us. Okay. As you can see, I wasn't really sure about how many nations form OAPI and only French-speaking nations. No, but it's so, okay. <laughs> We've got 55%. It's okay. Yeah. There are 17 <laughs> and uh, there are those small countries yeah. except Cameroon. <laughs> yes. Actually, Cameroon is the biggest. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Ivory Coast. Yeah, Ivory yeah. Coast, yeah. 
and uh, surprisingly, uh, okay, Ghana is on the other side, is with Aripo. Is is with Aripo, yes. Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigeria is nowhere. Nigeria, the, Nigeria did not want to join any one of the two. Yeah, so, mm. so when you are filing, you must go for Nigeria as independent country, as a territory. I think Nigeria, Ethiopia, South Africa. Mm. So I don't know, shall we? Because of the network, isn't it? Or was Google yeah, Meet yeah. better? Or this? Because Zoom is more stable than uh, Google Meet. So Whichever, you know, because of it has got nothing to do with the service provider. Yes. It is, uh, it is from that side. So, so the international service providers are fine. Because it's just a forum, so you must have a stable network. Because I can even see they are telling me mine here is unstable. So I'm just hanging in there, <laughs> hoping that it will not go off. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. So that's, that's good, that's good. Uh, yeah, so uh, you, you can see the, the, the level of education we need in relation to that region is a lot. Uh, it's quite a bit, yes. Mm. Mm. It's quite a lot, and uh, in terms of IP, I think the, there is a lot. There is a lot to be done there, but uh, luckily they they move as a block. So I, I wanted to know whether individual country have their own IP laws, which are now harmonized with the that bank Q. Is it Bank Q agreement, the one he said? Yeah, the Bank, bank Q uh, accord, yes. Yeah, accord, because... I think, I think they do so. It just I think it is a similar model like we do for Aripo, where all of us have, um, have individual statutes governing IP uh, and related uh, matters. And then we, what we, we end up meeting in Aripo for purposes of... Uh, forming this block and uh, mm -hmm. you see it is on the same lines like the European Patent Office where each country has their own patents but uh, I mean uh, their own uh, statutory regimes and then they fall back to the regional one for purposes of harmonizing and making it easier for operation. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah I, I think that's very interesting because if, if it is said that you see, a repo cannot issue patent before it consults individual countries to say yes or no. But here, exactly. here now, individual countries have no power, isn't it? Once issued, that's all. So my wonder is, suppose there is a court case in Cote d'Ivoire, litigation of infringement, and the court Cote d'Ivoire rules that the patent is invalid in Cote d'Ivoire. Will that invalidation affect the rest? <laughs> we will we, we we, we have to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. we, we had a matter here. You remember the the Sanitum case? Uh -huh. they, uh -huh. they, they registered their patent with a repo, and uh, Onunga will maybe highlight us on that one, whether they are still paying for it. But uh, it was nullified here by both my tribunal and, uh, and the High Court. So, and the, 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 the Sanitum company then went all the way to the Court of Appeal with a hope of uh, reversing the decision of the High Court, but they were not able. Rather, reversing the decision of the tribunal as well as the High Court, because the High Court agreed with us that uh, that patent, as it were, was no longer uh, sustainable and it had to go. Uh, of course, uh, once the country where it has been uh, accepted says it is not applicable, then it is not applicable here in Kenya. And uh, Nunga, I don't know that uh, uh, Sanitam now in Kenya can come to Zimbabwe and claim that they have an Aripo patent which can apply in other countries except here. Is Onunga Omiti, is he on the line? Hello, Fred. Hmm? Fred, are you, there? are you there? You know, it looks like I was talking to myself here because uh, no, no, no. I'm muted. Fred Otsuma is there. 
everything. And oh, I was waiting for Nunga to respond. Yes, Nunga, yes, yes, exactly. I it's also like called Fred, that. but it's okay. That's very interesting because if, if it's not valid in Kenya, I'm sure it, it remained valid in Uganda. We need to hear that. <laughs> Whether that pattern of course, in, invalidated uh, in Kenya see, continued being valid in you, Uganda. You, I think you need to do something in the in the regional member countries mm. to sustain your pattern mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, going to register there. In terms, I mean, uh, just mm. informing them that it's registered at uh, yes in a repo. Yeah. And then you pay. If you don't pay the the fees to sustain yeah. it, then it goes. Yeah. And I yeah. think that was the greatest folly of uh, of Sanitum. One. Yeah. It was not a sustainable pattern because it had uh, there was prior art mm -hmm. elsewhere in the world. So this footstep thing they were talking about here, and they were bringing beans from Singapore and uh, mm -hmm. claiming that they are the ones who have made it. So there, there was a lot of dishonesty in mm -hmm. the way they conducted uh, the business. Mm -hmm. And once uh, their opponents found out, uh, they, then they raised issues and. I wasn't able to sit myself because I defended certain other institutions against uh, claims against criminal prosecution by Sanitam. When I was the chairman of the tribunal, I, I recused myself and allowed my members to, to continue. Uh, in other situations, some people have questioned whether if the chairman was not sitting, was the tribunal properly constituted? Uh, those are some of the things we need to start talking about mm -hmm. to see whether if a chairman of a tribunal recuses himself, does it mean that the tribunal is now hamstrung? It cannot hear matters. Because mm -hmm. you, it could be for valid reasons that you are excusing yourself. Maybe conflict of interest could be the client who is, who is your former client and now is appearing in the tribunal and you are there uh, sitting as a chairman. Will, you, will, you, will it be fair for you to sit? knowing that that is your client prosecuting a case before you and you are the lawyer before. So I, I think I was right to recuse myself. Yeah. As to whether the other members of the tribunal could not be enabled to proceed, my advice to the members then was that we cannot allow the tribunal to be hamstrung by my inability to sit. And uh, all of us were gazetted individually and, uh, and you have the power to do that. So for a non-PCT uh, national patent application, that's a local patent application in ORP, you just need an expert to do the, uh, the description, the specification, and the claims. If there are drawings, they are added, the name, the address, and the nationality of the applicant. Uh, if they are inventors, the name, the address, and their nationalities. And if there is any prior art, the, the priority information, the serial number, the filing dates, and the country of origin should be added. That, that is for a national patent application. That is a patent within the nationals of the member states of ORP, of the, the countries that make up ORP. For international patent applications, we basically act as receiving attorneys receive information already filed at the level of WIPO. That is, uh, we receive the copy of the PCT request, a copy of the published application, including the description, the claims, the abstracts, and the drawing. And then we, uh, if there is a priority claim, we would require that the priority claim are equally submitted. If the invention is done by third parties and the, the application is filed by a company, they need to assign their invention to the, the applicant, which is the company. Let's say if the applicant is a, uni a university, then the, the inventors have to equally include the document of assignment it can be filed within a certain deadline, uh, within three months from the date of filing in ORP. And for us to act as local agents, we'll need a power of attorney 
um, which is unstamped, unnotarized, and unlegalized. That is a simple power of attorney is sufficient for us to do a, a filing of an OIP uh, patent application. As local practitioners, uh, when we have uh, we have just been trained on the uh, how to to identify classify patents, but at first we were just relying on information provided from the PCT from the WIPO Patent Scope website to prepare PCT applications, but recently, based on the the new legislation which became effective which was signed in Bamako on the 14th of December there are a lot of changes and innovations that would come into effect with regards to patent matters in ORP so my presentation now I'm, I'm going to try to rush it would be on an overview of innovations of the new Bangui Agreement signed in Bamako on December 14th, 2015, with respect to patents. The coming into force of the new agreement very soon will lead to profound changes in the functioning of OAPAY. Uh, uh, this actually, uh, this training is coming at the right time because uh, practitioners in Africa, in the African continent, who are interested in the ORP system, we have to really be schooled and keep kept abreast with the new system. So the analysis below would be focused on uh, the essential changes that have been brought to the new legislation. At first. These changes includes co-ownership, publication of applications, post-publication objections, claims of ownership, ownership right after publication of applications, division of the applications, possibility of correcting obvious material errors, and uh, finally, examination of patents on absolute grounds before the grants of patents and utility models in, in OAP. Um, the new law actually defines what a patent is. Hello? Are you getting me? Yes, yeah, yes. Am I still on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah no, no, you are on. Okay. Uh, so, as we are struggling to understand the new legislation, it's everybody who has to work, deal with patents has to understand the basics, the basic conditions of patents. It must be new. It must be that is novel. It must have inventive step, and it must be industrially applicable. This is new. This is obvious to everybody practicing patents. And if you did patents in university, then I, I may not need to explain this. But if you are interested, you must have read about these uh, three preconditions for uh, patents, which is what is applicable to in our paying. So the to benefit from the new legislation. Practitioners have to be abreast with the changes. The new legislation highlights the issue of co-ownership. At first, patents could not be co-owned in ORP. That is, uh, two inventors could not apply for one titled invention as a patent in ORP. But right now, Article 10 of our law has expressly 
make that possible if you permit i can just read it or i can share this afterwards but it says each co-owner may exploit the invention of his own benefit except to compensate equitably other co-owners who do not personally exploit the invention or who have not granted operating licenses in the absence of an amicable agreement the compensation shall be fixed by the competent national jurisdiction. So uh, in terms of innovation, you have that invent inventors can be employees of a company who jointly come up with an invention and uh, they, they are allowed to apply jointly if they don't assign their invention to the company itself. When they are operating as as employees under a contract, the, the, the employer is the owner of the invention and but when they are operating outside of an employment contract they can rightfully be attributed a patent a title to the invention without the employer having anything to do with the yeah, invention the second innovation with regards to to the general changes are the publication of applications. At first, patents were just filed. ORP would just do a formality examination without publishing for third parties to, to criticize or to oppose. But right now, we uh, when the new legislation becomes effective after the signatory of the four remaining countries. Once a patent is filed, be it a national patent or a PCT national phase or regional phase entry application into ORP, it must be published for third parties to object to it. That is, when it's published, it requires that those train in the art to, to object if it's, there's some similarity, if it infringes on their prior rights, then OAP would attribute time. Uh, normally, it's three months for the parties to, to adjudicate on this, on the conflict before the title is issued. But this does not apply to international application, that is to PCT applications. PCT applications means the PCT, the, the patents that have been filed through WIPO, through the patent cooperation agreement, and they are simply designating ORP. So when they are uh, they are filed, they are not open to oppositions or for for criticism. Opposition after publication. What, what is the, pro, uh, the objective of opposition after publication? It permits patent attorneys to first of all object on the inventive step, the novelty, the industrial applicability, and uh, permit OAP to re-examine the patent before granting its certificate of approval. This normally takes place within three months. Once the organization receives the notice of objection from the applicant or his agent, they are given three months to a three months renewable ones to request for, for re-examination the parties, this, 
once it's challenged, the organizations can equally take forward the, the challenge application to the applicant and they have a right to respond to the challenge before within another period of three months before the patent is granted. Um, the, the examination could be on the number of claims or on the dispute relating to the different claims or, or the title or the invention or the infringe uh, any prior out that has been copied which to prove that it's not novelty, it's not new, it's an existing art. Uh, this equally applies for utility models and plant varieties. Then the, 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 the third innovation of the new legislation is it permits for claim of ownership before the organization. At first, persons could not claim ownership of a particular title to an invention in OAP. But right now, the new, the new legislation will permit that. The time frame within which to do this is three months renewable ones. Before the organization decides on the ownership claim, it has to hear the parties and this should be done within 60 days after notification of the objection. The final decision, if it proves that the ob objector is right, the patent will be transferred and recorded in the, in the patent register. Another uh, innovation of the new legislation is the division of applications. An initial division pattern can be, div be divided into several division or several patterns based on the objections raised. If, if there's an objection, raised by an inventor who participated in the creation of, the, of the, the invention and he decides to claim ownership of that portion of his, he can be granted title to, to it by the organization. And then the, 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 the next innovation is the possibility of correction of errors in patent applications. At first, if a patent was filed and during examination, it was noted that there the are errors, you will be asked just to refile. But right now, the, the examiner gives the applicant the possibility of correcting obvious material errors found in the application. Then lastly, the patents in ORP now will be examined on absolute grounds before granting of a patent certificate. That is, it, 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 it outlines the system with international uh, patent applications. All, uh, at first, the OAP system had its particularity in the sense that uh, a patent was filed, it was not ex uh, formally challenged, it was not published and uh, for challenge, and uh, no corrections were done. They just accepted that, okay, it, it comes from WIPO, it, uh, there's no need for corrections, but right now we have to go through strict examination on absolute grounds before the issue of the certificate to, to, to grant. So to, to, to rephrase what is required to file a, a, a national patent application, that is the basic information to secure a filing date for a national patent application are as follows. 
the description of the patent as a specification, which consists of the description, the claim, the drawings, the name of the applicants, the name, address, and nationality of the applicants, the name, the address, and nationality of the inventors, the assignment documents, if the inventors, if the applicant is not the inventor or the inventors, and the priority documents, which consist of the serial number, the filing date, and the country of origin. In the second case, we would are concerned with uh, basic information to secure filing date for a patent cooperation treaty application. That is referred to as PCT national phase or regional phase application in OAPA. In this particular case, uh, we, I, uh, we, we are versed, we, we have been trained to exploit information from the WIPO uh, website called, referred to as patent scope. So we simply request, either request the client to provide the necessary information for us to prepare the applications in five copies, pay the required fees, which is based on the cost calculator provided by OAPE. But in the case where the external collaborator or associate just requires us to file a patent request by providing the number or the reference of the PCT, we can go to the patent scope website, uh, web, WIPO website in patent, under patent scope and obtain the necessary information to, to file. This information consists of a copy of the PCT request, a copy of the, the published application, which includes the description, claims, the abstracts, and the drawings. And uh, we would uh, require equally a, a power of attorney, which uh, can be laid file within three months with a uh, uh, with a possibility of an additional time extension of one month. Uh, secondly, if there is a priority claim, will require the certified copy of the priority documents. It should be either in English or in French, because the languages of OAP are French and English. Come, uh, referring to applications coming from Kenya. So once the documents are in English, it does not require any tra translation because a translation is equally one of the reasons that can delay applications. These uh, certified pr priority documents have to be filed in OAP within three months from the filing dates in OAP with a possibility of a one month time extension. And then uh, the assignment documents if the inventors have assigned their patent to the applicants, they need to sign a deed, produce a notarized deed of assignment, which has to be equally filed, lodged in OAPE within three months from the filing date. There's equally a possibility of one month time extension for the priority documents to be filed. After that, is done, OAP will now proceed with the formality examination of the of the, the patent application. What does this mean? It means that OAP would have to check if the documents submitted meets up the formal requirements if, secondly, if the official cost has been paid. For a start, if an applicant is not able to cover all the costs at once, he can pay for the application fees and the publication fees and maybe the fees for the priority documents. And then when uh, the, 
the official receipt is issued indicating the rest of the official fees before the examiner proceeds to examine the application in ORP, the, the additional fees, the rest of the fees for examination has to be paid. The fees is a, a graded for the first 10 pages. There's a particular fees that has to be paid. The first 10 pages for, depending on the length of the description, it's free. After that, in a series of 10 pages, there's a specific cost that is applicable. The cost starts from 220,000, goes to 300,000, and to 400. So if you have an, a description of 41 pages, uh, you find yourself paying about a million 20,000 francs just for the length of the description. That is not, that does not include the application, the publication, and the priority claims and the assignment of the cost for assignment. That said, after the examination, the, the, the patent, that is as per the old system, the patent will be published and then there's a possibility of opposition. But with the new legislation now, once the patent is filed, it will be published for objection. The, 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 the third parties, interested third parties are given three months to object. After this period, if there are no objections, then OAP will proceed to substantive uh, abs uh, examination on absolute grounds. If it passes this phase, then it will proceed to grant the patent certificate, the certificate of registration of the patent in OAP. That said, uh, the, the innovations has come to introduce the fact that, that uh, inventors can co-own a patent application if they decide to apply for the patent themselves. But if they decide to assign the uh, application to either an institution, to a university, or to a corporate board entity, then they, that has to be accompanied by a deed of assignment for local applications. Um, for the purpose of time, I will not go into full details, but I want to maybe if it becomes interactive, I'll, I'll be able to answer questions that are very specific, but I, I will just do a, a brief summary of what practitioners should know about patents application in OAP. Uh, for uh, with regards to costs, uh, that can be provided on a, a request basis. But what you note now is like a summary for the presentation is that there are two possibilities of filing a patent in ORP. A national patent belonging to applicants from countries within the ORP region would subsequently be examined, published for objection before a certificate of grant is issued. For international applications, that is application based on the Patent Cooperation Treaty Agreement, which have gone through the WIPO system, the examination would be done and will still be published for ob objection. And after a period of three months, they will be granted. So um, in terms of duration of a patent in OAP, 
the duration is 20 years, but uh, after the registration, annuities, uh, renewals, or maintenance have to be paid every year. That is, every year before the expiry of the anniversary date of the filing, that's of the original filing date, the annuities we have to be paid. The annuities are calculated from the earliest application date for patents based on PCTs. That is the application from the country of origin. But and, uh, maintenance or annuities for local patents are based on the first filing dates in the OAP region. The fees equally are, are being based on the, 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 the tariffs, the schedule of charges provided by the organization OAP. The, when you're dealing with local agents, you should know that they have a value added fee to the official fees. So there's an official cost and there's a professional cost and maybe there's this, there's disbursement based on uh, the distance to OIP, the expenses incurred in terms of maybe the, the DHL or the courier or the administrative work carried out to file the patent. Uh, I would be ready to answer any specific questions that you may have. My internet has actually derailed me and I've not been coerced, consistent with what I prepared, but I'm sorry. I, I hope I, I made myself clear in a way that uh, you can get to me, you can understand me, I can have a question for me. Yeah, uh, thank you, David. Um, we have been given another 10 minutes, so I think the proper discussion will come immediately after in the final session. But if you look at the chats, there are some questions that I've sent you, David, directly, privately. You can uh, quickly yes. look at them and see if you can have a discussion on that. But uh, maybe you can handle this before we, we, we go off, because it will go off with the questions. But please, then when we come on. back, yeah, when we come back, I go think ahead. members can uh, continue now. All right. Yes, please go ahead with your questions. Are you able to read them? Uh, okay, first, I see how do you treat computer implemented systems, uh, uh, system inventions? Uh, the, in OAP, the, the, this is debatable because it's not classified as an invention. Uh, it's most uh, software in particular are, are protected as copyrights under copyright uh, this thing, uh, legislation. So it's, uh, if it's an invention, computer invention that deals with a solution to an existing problem, it can be filed as protected as a patent. But if it's just software, if you develop an app, or an application, uh, it cannot be filed as a, a patent uh, under patent in OAP. It will be protected under copyright. Then uh, share on with us on how OAP handles a patent application that is converted to utility model. If an applicant submits the forms requesting for utility models, and OIP examines them and realizes that they are sufficient enough to be considered a, a, a patent, they, they will make an express request for an applicant to resubmit and pay additional fees to, to meet up the cost for a patent application. Now, the, the other question, you are free to chat on our, our comments. And OK, that is it. Any other question, please? Did you get my explanation with respect to converting utility models to patents and vice versa? Yeah, towards the end. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
In the case, uh, I, I may repeat it if we still have time. In the case of a patent application which is qualified not sufficient to be a patent, OAP will request the applicant to resubmit uh, application forms, a request for a utility model, and OAP will reimburse the cost paid uh, by the applicant who intended to file a patent. In the, in the reverse, if a utility model is considered uh, sufficient to be a patent, after examination, the applicant will be requested to resubmit uh, a request for his patent to be examined and be attributed a title as a patent. And I get it. I get it. Yeah, that, that's okay. Um, the, the issue of timeline, because utility model is 10 years, pattern is 20. Will this now yes. be upgraded? Will this be degraded in terms of timeline? From which date? Because we have an yes. issue in Kenya. If a, a utility model in OAP is uh, actually uh, have a validity of five years renewable twice. So it's the a total period of validity of a model utility model per se is 15 years. But in the, uh, during the application phase, if it's identified that it is a patent, it will be upgraded to 20 years. And likewise for a patent, which has a validity period of 20 years, if the examiner, uh, uh, I appreciate it and realize that it does not qualify for to be classified as a, a, a patent, but a utility model. It will be uh, the period would be start counting. The first period of five years would apply and it will be subject to renewal twice every five years, successfully for every five years. So after 15 years, it will fall into the public domain. Yeah, thank you, thank you, I, I got it, I got it. Members? We are running out of time, but you can have Hello, a Paul. Time. Hello, Paul, how are you? Oh, fine. Yes, I had, I had raised my hand. Okay. Uh, Yes, I've got a question. Uh, you, you talked, uh, thank you very much, uh, David. That was wonderful, though you were interrupted a bit. Uh, you talked about uh, an, employee's, an employer's right to an invention. Uh, yes. what, how, what, enti what entitles an employer to claim an, uh, a right to an invention? Is it the fact that he's been in, uh, he's employed that person, or it's because uh, if he's been employed to as an inventor? Uh, the, can, can I answer, please? Yes. Uh, um, if uh, uh, if an employ if a worker is covered by a an employment contract, everything that he does using the time is is time for work belongs to the employer. It's if you are working as a staff of the university conducting research, your findings belong, do, do not belong to you. You have the right of invention, but you must assign that right to your employer. Is this, uh, if your employer David. is a university, then by virtue of the fact that he pays you a salary for carrying out the research, he is he becomes the owner. But if you're doing the invention on a private basis, let's say at home, uh, with under no obligation of or employer-employee relationship, you are the inventor. You have the full right over your invention. And that is acceptable in our being. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, thank you, Paul. I think that is also common here, yeah, and it's a very big issue because nobody is employed to invent. But if you are employed to do like research or innovation, then anything you come up with is considered to belong to the employer. I think that is uh, what what is doing. Anybody else? What they have been telling you to do? No, no. Just approve it. Mm. Sure. I don't know whether I'm right there, but I think that is what happened. So we need we need uh, pattern drafting skills which we don't have, mm. and I, but I'm happy that uh, uh, Strathmore University through uh, CIPIT are mm. uh, now conducting training for drafting. I mean, uh, pattern drafting. Yeah. Uh, it, it used to be embarrassing, or it has been embarrassing that uh, even the big law firms in town here they mm. they take their application by their clients to South Africa for for it to be spruced up by patent drafters or uh, or UK. Then they bring it here looking like they've done a very good job when it is not them who have done it. So we need our own homegrown uh, patent drafters so that we can really embrace and uh, accept uh, IP as as a, as a, as a profession or as a as a utility for en en enhancing development in, in this country. So it's okay, it, uh, Frederick, I, I think it has been very informative in, as far as I'm concerned. The, the only thing is, you remember with, with this uh, online uh, capacity to, to, to have people, presenters from far off countries like that one, is, is very encouraging. Remember we used to, if we were to organize a seminar like this, yeah. We needed to travel. We needed right. to put funds together, buy ticket, accommodation, yeah. then travel for so many days uh, to come and do something like this. So yeah. online and virtual presentations like this will save us a lot of costs. And, uh, and also the learning from the comfort of our homes, uh, office, like uh, where I am now, I'm in the office, yeah. Um, it makes it very easy. I, I've traveled all the way to Cameroon to, to which town is that easy? That is the capital city. Yeah, yeah, in the capital is Yaoundé. He's in Duale. Duale or Duale? Mm -hmm. There is Duale. Duale, D-U something. That's why it yes. is. Yeah. So, oh, that is, oh, that is a, it's also the commercial city, I think. It's, uh, mm -hmm. Is a commercial city in Cameroon. Okay, okay. It's very interesting. Now that um, is where that is where Kenya Kenya is uh, dropped down sometimes the plane. Oh, 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 Duala, yeah, yeah. Duala, it's called Duala. Duala, it must be. It's it's oh yeah, it's a commercial city. It's like our. It's a commercial. Kenya, we like don't Mombasa have. We can't or, say Mombasa is, but it's close no, to Mombasa. Nairobi is both commercial. It's close to Mombasa. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Do we have? We don't have a commercial city here. We, it's all everything is in Nairobi. Everything is in Nairobi. So we, we need we need to remove the capital, the central government from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. That government to some other place like to Isiolo. Then oh. uh, we we let we let Nairobi be the commercial city. Oh, the commercial city, the Lagos of. Uh, of like Abuja now, yes, yes, the Lagos of Nigeria. Yes. You know, they left the commercial aspect in Abu in Lagos, mm -hmm. then they went to for administration in Abuja. Yeah, Tanzania is it Dodoma and the, the rest Dodoma of... is here for yes, exactly. But I think um, Mangufuli is Mangufuli is always in, in Dar es Salaam. Yeah, uh, he had gone to the old. He had gone to the old connection. Now I think he's joining us. Okay, any question to me specifically? I know we shall do an exercise and uh, get a certificate of participation. So the exercise will be more practical. You might end up being given a form of a happy to fill and. Uh, uh, an imaginary inventor in various countries of the world and approaches you to file in, in two or three countries in Africa, including OAPI. 
So you need to apply what you have learned today to ensure that you help the client successfully. So any observation? Yes. Mildred, I thought you had something, okay. Any comment apart from saying that we have taken too long to get to the present at the last final part? Eh? <laughs> he, he had gone to the wrong uh, uh, invite. He had gone to the old one, which was telling him you are already in another meeting. So he's now getting oh. to the new new invitation. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So... Because I also wanted him to relate to, hello, do you have some idea about the, because now Aripo and Owapi, Aripo and Owapi are uh, being harmonized, meaning they will behave the same. Do you have an idea of this African Union? They want to do uh, African Intellectual Property Organization office. That will be very good. You know, we, we discussed this in some, some functions in Geneva some time back when I was the chairman of the tribunal. Yes. And uh, that time it was so off, you know, nobody was even interested. Uh, it didn't look like uh, people, you know, that time when you suggested a uniform thing, there was a lot of rigidity from West Africa. They, they, it was like an ownership. It, it was like a club. Oh, okay. uh, because even countries like the English speaking countries like Cameroon itself is English uh, speaking. Some section of it is English, the other one is French. And uh, they were not interested in, in the discussion. The, mm -hmm. the, the feeling of affiliation and uh, to France and then the rest of us, uh, affiliation to England is still very strong. And it, is, it was strong for the longest time at WIPO because the people sitting there in the, in the WIPO, majority of the executives are from West Africa. Oh, okay. They, you'll, find, you'll find that uh, employing people from East Africa is, in fact, is difficult. They, mm -hmm. I think the highest they ever did for us yes. was to take somebody from Kipi to go to PCT. That was the highest from East Africa. I don't think we have anybody else there. We, we have, of course, Nigerians, I think they have forced their way in because of their sheer numbers mm -hmm. and their forcefulness in terms of foreign policy and the, the drive to get the Nigerian IP recognized and appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, here, you know, we took so long, uh, Fred, when we, were, when we established, for example, when the Act, the Industrial Property Act was enacted in two, 2001, for the longest time, from 1998, we couldn't have, the law was, was providing for a tribunal, but there was no courtroom. There, was, there were no facilities, and the minister kept telling us it will be established, it will be established. They kept renewing our membership for so long, and we wondered, why are we earning this 2,000 every month? Mm -hmm. uh, that time it was 2,000 shillings, so when you sit as a member. Wow. And, they, and, they were, and they were sending the money to us, and we were doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was telling all of Kero was the chairman then, we shouldn't be earning this money without doing anything. But then we, we, we started organizing for whenever a minister had something to do with IP and they wanted an input from the tribunal. And the chairman then put a few of us in his team to do presentations and to travel with him you know, across the world. Yeah. That was the only positive thing we did between 1990 eight mm. no nineteen ninety four to nineteen to two thousand and one mm. when the industrial property act was enacted and then now we really fought hard to get a tribunal to get an office even then when it was established you might, you remember they used to give us twenty seven million shillings to mm. run the affairs of the tribunal okay okay Actually, it started with nine million and then it became a problem and the money was not enough and then again, we're not being given the money anyway. It is managed by the ministry. So the, the peers started utilizing our vote for other things for the ministry. Okay. 
unless you if you want to travel they, you have to make the application to the peers and the mm -hmm. minister then they say how many people want to travel you don't want to all the members of the tribunal they say no uh, two of you chairman and one other member chosen by the by the the chairman yeah so and then of course somebody from the ministry is always coming into such trips because they represent the government and the peers would like to be given a report by his own staff, not by us, because okay. we're in the private sector. Mm. Okay, okay. But we've come a long way. Now they appreciate, and I think uh, the budget for the tribunal should be in the region of about 100 million. Mm. By the time I was leaving, it was uh, that reached 27 years. Mm. Uh, that was in 2014. So right now, I think it's 100, oh. which is very good. To, and to that is the it. budget that has been taken to, to, to run the tribunal. But it's taken now. It is managed by the chief registrar of the judiciary. So again, uh, if there's no uh, proper understanding and appreciation of what IP does in this country, when you take it to a registrar at uh, the high court, mm -hmm. she will decide on what is important for judiciary, not for the tribunal. So they will undercut you. They will spend the money for other functions. Then invite the chairman and the secretary to, to do one of two things in mm -hmm. terms of judicial work, you know, like seminars, do presentations, and nothing else. And then hearings, they can decide whether they can invite you. I you can see. see, I think David is almost getting in. Or he has posted that. Uh, no, no. No, it's it's what it's mine. Do? It's mine. I'm just trying to oh. to. There was a process. Uh, there were there were some steps that. Uh, I don't know whether it's unable completely. Is all right. I I think. Uh, yeah. You okay. know these technological challenges. Uh, mm are, uh, are uh, quite interesting. They can spoil the party. <laughs> exactly. You, you can imagine if you, had, if you had 500 people waiting to listen to him. Yeah. Uh, it would be bad. Yeah. But anyway, I'm happy with the participants here because it also shows the level of uh, interest by practitioners. How much do they want to know? Uh, how do they, how do they want to get involved? Uh, it is important if a majority of lawyers got interested in uh, IP matters because you see a lot of them are doing trademarks, yeah, which is easier to do. Uh, some are into copyright, yeah, which is uh, it's also not very difficult because most of the work is done for copyright. Uh, mm -hmm. You find. If it is a book, it has been written by somebody else. Yeah. Very little to do. If it is a, a music, it has been produced by somebody else. Yeah. Yes. So uh, this technical area, this technical area, has it gone on? No, no. Hello? You are hearing me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are hearing you. I think we have. Uh, six minutes again maybe we can uh, we can do we can close up and then uh, we'll we'll ask him to meet then us in we'll the revision we, we, we. yes i think so because uh, we have really punished him i know he's anxious to come back yeah uh, the network much we can do about mm. Mm. the network so all during right. revision so close up it's all uh, right uh, before we come back to uh, Moses, we get to close completely. Uh, do we have anything from uh, each one of us? Uh, or you can just say bye, uh, you've enjoyed it, or it has bored you, or you've learned nothing. <laughs> Anthony, are you with us? We have Anthony, just a few, a word of bye, or, or any comment. Um, we were learning about OAPI. Hello, guys. Hello. Um, uh, I have issues with my webcam. So
so I cannot uh, start the video, but I uh, learned a lot. Thank you. And uh, next time we can uh, still learn more. Okay, uh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Nesh, do you have Nesh with us? Okay. Mildred? I have nothing. You have nothing. You're okay. I hope you've learned something. I got in late. <laughs> yes. And um, when I got in late, I was trying to catch up because I was away. And okay. I'm trying to reach to, to get to the house to attend it. So I'll try. Uh, I would wish to have, have a copy of the recorded to me if I could make it and record it myself so that I could catch up before the next revision time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we've recorded. We've recorded most of the things, uh, including what we've just been discussing with Moses. So you can you can pick one or two points. And you will have the slides, and then you will also have our conduct. So feel free to to engage us. We want you to come out as an expert in filing with the OAPI. Okay, Zipora. Yes. Zipora. Yes. Yeah. I'm I'm thankful so much because of uh, what I've learned. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes. Yes. We're hearing you. We're hearing. You. Yeah. Yeah. So I've realized that uh, this is not my field. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad. <laughs> but, uh, don't tell me that. Don't, don't say that you've come out to zero. No, no, no. At least you've learned so that there I'm is something called a happy in full. In full is what? I have known it. So yeah. happy. Correct. I um regional pattern application. With OAP, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I've learned. It's, it's in French. It's Organisation de l'Africa, Property and Intellectual. Meaning, it's Organisation of African Intellectual Property. So it's it's, okay. it's a body so of okay. yeah, it's a body of a collection of many countries with a similar thinking and okay. findings to to manage uh, administration okay. of patent, trademark, copyright as a group. So, yeah. so there's something I missed initially. Yes. Uh, the introduction part of it. This is the continuation. So that's why I'm hanging somewhere. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but but we'll yes. read. Once you get that it's it's a collection, it's an organization. It's like go to, but this is now countries. Okay. So because patent filing is so complicated and tedious, so they they, 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 they put resources together and pay salary to a few people to do for them together. Okay. As a group. I I heard of law firm. I'm a teacher. So you see the confusion. No, you you are not even you are not even very far from this. You know why? As a teacher in the university. Yeah. Uh, you remember every university in Kenya, and I think uh, Masinde Muliro is one of them. They have yeah. uh, intellectual intellectual property policy, IP uh -huh. policy, which I believe uh, you should check in the university library. I'll you have I'll it. check. And, uh, for you as a teacher, because you teach. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> as a teacher who is teaching and who is writing, who is writing, you have to know about uh, protection of your of your publications as a teacher. And those are copyright things which you need to know, which of course has got nothing to do with patents, but uh, it is general knowledge on IP it can be very useful for you. So you are not far off from this. And I'm, I'm happy that so you are. Yes, <laughs> and I'm happy you are there because uh, we need everybody to know.